The ability to hear is crucial for an animal's survival, as it is implicated in activities including prey detection, predator evasion, and communication. Acoustic communication is particularly difficult due to the duality of sound as a pressure wave and particle stimulus. However, all fish possess the ability to hear, and many have developed complex structures to aid in this process. There are two pathways responsible for the transmission of auditory stimuli in fish. The first implicates a direct route between the water medium surrounding the fish and the inner ear. The second path, however, implicates an indirect route involving the use of a peripheral specialization, such as a swim bladder or an alternative gas bubble structure that has a direct connection to the inner ear, allowing for increased sensitivity and hearing range, as well as a lower auditory threshold. Other factors associated with the environment and the stimulus itself can also have an effect on the perception of auditory stimuli in fish. So for example, in catfish, it has been found that increasing the water temperature resulted in a decreased auditory threshold. Additionally, in other animals, it has been found that increasing the duration of a sound stimulus resulted in an increased latency, or the amount of time that it took for an electrical response to be formed in the brain, which is known as an auditory evoked potential. So my current research investigates auditory evoked potentials in goldfish. Goldfish have relatively sensitive hearing range due to the fact that they possess a swim bladder. They have a relatively low auditory threshold, and they're also a urethermal species, meaning that they're able to tolerate a wide variety of temperatures. Based on what was seen in catfish, it is hypothesized that increasing the water temperature would result in a decreased threshold to auditory stimuli in goldfish. Additionally, it was hypothesized that increasing the duration of the sound stimulus would result in an increased latency in the goldfish auditory vocal potential. So in my current research, I present sound stimuli to goldfish using an underwater speaker and evoke potentials are recorded using subdermal electrodes, one of which is implanted in the brainstem of the goldfish. To investigate the effects of duration on evoked potentials in goldfish, I presented sound stimuli of varying durations. So based on preliminary results, they're currently consistent with the hypothesis that increasing sound duration would result in an increased latency of response, suggesting that they are responding to the offset of the stimulus. Additionally, the effects of temperature on evoked potentials is currently being investigated by presenting these sound stimulus durations at two different temperatures. Now, while I currently do not have the results of these experiments, I look very forward to sharing them at the You Will Discover conference. Well, much time and attention has been devoted to studying the properties and mechanisms of the acoustic system of many species of fish, there are still questions that remain to be answered. Furthering our knowledge of the acoustic system of goldfish serves to advance the field of fish audiology by providing insight to the effects of environmental factors, including water temperature and surrounding sound stimuli, on fish hearing. Advancing our knowledge of the mechanisms of fish hearing is crucial to the continued application of fish models of human hearing.